Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WIPB-TV and Indiana Public Radio at Ball State University. Today we are chatting with Annette Craycraft, Executive Director of East Central Indiana CASA. Annette has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Annette, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So CASA takes care of children, advocates for children. Talk about the mission of CASA and, and precisely what an advocate does. So CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates for Children, and our goal is to advocate for a child's best interest and help get them into a safe and permanent home as quickly as possible with, where they would thrive. Um, that's our main goal is we want to see them safe and in a, a caring home so they don't suffer abuse or neglect anymore. Now what's interesting about the CASA's role is the CASA is representing the child. Correct. There is a There is a specific, and in a certain respect, there is a... Um, there is a, a presumption of there being a conflict, uh, perhaps, with other interests. So this person is representing the child, thinking about what is best for the child if the child themselves were an adult and representing their own interests. Talk about how the, the CASA is trained okay. and how they are to think about their role. So CASAs undergo a pretty extensive training. Um, this isn't your run-of-the-mill volunteer opportunity. We um, have about 36 hours of classroom training that you would do, and then in addition to that, we have courtroom observation, and that's about six hours. We train the volunteers on everything you need to know um, about the child welfare system in Indiana, how the courtroom works, and how the judicial system works. Um, we go through a, a extensive diversity training, and we look at all forms of diversity, including socioeconomic status, because that's a really big piece that we deal with. Um, we look at report writing and how they're supposed to share their information with the judge. So every tool that you need to be an advocate, we provide to you in that initial training. And then throughout the years, throughout the year, we give about 12 hours of ongoing training to the volunteers that we ask them to participate in to keep them fresh and so they can learn about community um, service providers and other resources out in the community to help the children that they serve. Let's talk about the actual experience of a CASA once they are assigned a child. How does that generally unfold? Okay, well, once you're assigned a child, um, usually a CASA will take on one case at a time, and then after a while they may take on another. Um, the biggest part is to really get into the fact-finding of that case and look at all the aspects and details. So you're going to want to meet with the in the Indiana it's DCS, the Department of Child Services, um, caseworker, and learn everything about the case that that individual knows. And then you're going to want to look at all the paperwork that we get from medical providers, educators, um, mental health providers, um, social service agencies that are doing wraparound services. Um, you kind of look at everything. It's almost like being a private investigator at first because you have to really look at all aspects of the case. You become a co-caseworker in, in, in a sense with the DCS caseworker. Um, you are actually initially starting off taking a look at that child's history from the point of view of, from the point of intake and whatever the investigation that is undertaken uh, uncovers, you're trying to educate yourself of that. And then the child's environment, the child's needs, their personality, mm -hmm. uh, the programs that they're, that they're enrolled in in school, the history of, of issues that might have manifested for that child. Correct. So you have really become a committed adult to, that, to the welfare of that child. Correct, and we, we want to advocate for what's in that child's best interest. Um, with older youth, obviously, we ask what they want and what they feel like their needs are, but these children can't speak for themselves. I would say 80% of our clients are the eight, between the ages of zero to seven, and so that's where we look at that child's best interest and advocate what we think would be the best for them, which is a little bit different than all the other parties that are involved. Um, we always say, you know, when the parents are involved, they have representation or people advocating for them. Um, when DCS is involved, their goal is to try to reunify the family initially. So all of the work they're putting in towards the case is to try to bring that family back together. And we realize that's great. We all want to see that happen. But we look at a lot of cases and we know that's not going to happen. So then we really need to dig in and determine what would be best for that child and let the judge know what we think would benefit them in the long run. And sometimes that's not returning home to their parents. And over the years, the CASA acquired a professional level skill, even though there are there are volunteers, 
the amount of hours that are absorbed by a child and by caring for that child, by representing that child, is very substantial. And the courts also place a very considerable weight on the input mm -hmm. uh, of different CASAs. You're correct. And there was a study done a couple of years ago from na our national organization that says um, four out of five judges really take that information from the child advocate at heart when they make the decisions for children. And so they really do want to hear that independent input. And the one unique thing about our CASA volunteers is it really resonates with the children when you show up to talk with them. We, we um, mandate that they see the children at a minimum once a month. So when you go visit the child and you tell them that you're a volunteer and you're there because you chose to be and that you care for that child and it's not your job, that significantly resonates with that child. And you see the child really start to open up to you. I mean, these are children that have a myriad of individuals in and out of their lives daily and caseworkers turning over. So when we have that one advocate that's appointed to them and lets them know I'm here because I chose to be, that really is significant to that child in the long run. How many children are cared for in which counties uh, for the uh, CASA of East Central Indiana? In 2017, we had about 1,431 children assigned to our program. I would say it's probably a little over 1,200 for 2018. Um, we saw new cases going down last year, but um, cases that were that were continuing over, that were open, those were staying open a lot longer. Um, we served last year about 600 cases. Um, we can't, with volunteers, we can't serve every single child when you have 1,200 right. children, um, which is why things like this are so important to get the word out that we always need more volunteers with our agency. How many of your volunteers um, have themselves um, had this this type of experience? and? and um, are exercising these skills as a, as a way to ensure mm -hmm. that future generations are, are more protected than they were. I would say probably 15% at least, I know have had trauma in their background, um, rather that be as a child, um, rape, incest, something that's happened to them that's led them to do this type of work. And it's very critical to us that we make sure that they've healed from their own wounds right. to do this work because we don't want to open up any new wounds with another child. So we try to work with them to make sure that there's no um, there's no issues out there that would bring them trauma or and that's why we ask sometimes what type of cases would be better suited for them because if there's a certain type of case that would make more trauma happen in their mm -hmm. lives we won't assign them to those well that's 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 a, such a an art is to engage people where they live um, protect the ch protect children and, and make sure that people are prepared for that type of responsibility mm -hmm. that they don't go through a self-destructive cycle that could also have a negative impact on, on a child. However, these knowledge holders are people who can inform the sensibility of an organization because they have some special insight mm -hmm. and sh they have some self-identification with, with the population of children. And they, they are actual carriers of of information that is just invaluable to your mission. Correct, you know, especially the, the, some of the best ones um, that are helpful in that way are former foster kids. Um, they have, you know, firsthand experienced what some of our children are going through. And one of the things that's resonated with me a lot that we've heard from some of them is how important the sibling relationship is for children. Um, you know, when they're removed from their family, you you know, you instinctively think, oh, it's horrible. They're removed from their, their parents, they're removed from their home, but sometimes the thing that they struggle with the most is that contact with their siblings and needing that. And so that's been very informative for us and to hear about that from former foster youth. Um, we, we've always been told that, but to actually hear it firsthand. Um, also too, one of the things that we've learned from some of them is how important it is to try to get children to come to court hearings, especially if they're older. Um, we've always had the mindset like, oh, we don't want to take them out of school. Um, we don't want to, you know, they we need to be there. Them yeah. and so on and so forth. And they've said, you know, we, you take us out of school to go to the dentist. You take us out of school to go to other appointments. When we're there in school and we know that there's a judge talking about what's happening in our lives, we're not focusing in school all day. We're thinking about what's happening right. over in the courtroom. And so it's that was something too that I learned a lot about from some of them. Talk about the type of needs that you have at CASA and how people can help the organization to become stronger in service to children. 
throughout the state of Indiana, there's CASA programs all over the state. So not only mine, but others, but we all need volunteers desperately right now. Um, the ca the um, cases are really surging. Our case numbers went down a little bit last year, but that was very rare. Um, again, my program is about fifth in the state of Indiana. So our case numbers are usually fairly high and we're already the end of January we've hit the number of case, new cases that we hit like in March of last year. So we're already seeing those numbers to go back up. And when you have an advocate for a child, you're gonna see the outcomes for that child be much better. You're gonna see less um, re-entry into the child welfare system. There's just so many positive benefits of having an advocate for that child. So if there's any way that you wanna help children who are being um, abused or neglected, not everybody can be a foster parent. That's a very, um, in-depth um, commitment, but this is a way you can help. And it's about an average of five to 10 hours a month. Um, and most people have that to give. So definitely consider doing, um, becoming a CASA volunteer if, you know, if you're called to do that. Annette Craycraft, thank you so much for sharing the work of Central Indiana CASA with us today. And thank you so much for your insights. Great, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure.